Okay, now that you have your robot assembled, we'll go over how everything should work if the circuit is connected correctly, and then next we'll go into some troubleshooting steps for common problems you might see. So, you're going to take your robot, make sure that the power switch is slid down when you're holding the robot like this, that means it's off, or if you're facing the same direction of the robot, so consider these photoresistors the front, then the power switch should be slid to the left to make sure the robot's off. You are going to want to take your photoresistors and think of these kind of like antenna or um, eyes with long stalks at the bottom like on some insects and kind of bend these up and outward a little bit. So these are going to be your sensors that it's going to use to look for light as it's driving forward. So you don't want those right next to each other or facing up or backwards. You want to be able to lead the robot forward with a flashlight. And then finally take both of your potentiometers, those are these white knobs, and turn them all the way counterclockwise. And once you have done all that, turn the robot on by sliding the power switch and nothing should happen if everything's connected correctly and you followed those directions. So what you're going to do next is very slowly take one of the potentiometers and turn the knob up just a little bit at a time, and by up I mean clockwise. And you see as I was turning slowly there, this motor started to spin. So I'll do that again. So I'm going to turn this very slowly. That motor starts to spin. Now I want to try that with my other motor. So I'm going to turn this potentiometer. Notice how, if you notice, the blue motor wires are crisscrossed across the robot. So the potentiometer controls the motor on the other side. I'm going to turn that up. And that motor starts to spin. So what these potentiometers are doing is controlling the robot's sensitivity or threshold for detecting light. So as I turn that up, that increases the sensitivity to the point where the ambient light in the room is enough to trigger the photoresistor and the circuit will turn the motor on. So if I turn both of these up so the motors are spinning and put the robot down, my robot will move along. Now I have it on a piece of white poster board here which isn't the smoothest surface. You'd be better off on a smooth tabletop. So the robot isn't moving very fast here but you can see that it does move. Now, remember though what we want to do, I'll turn these off so you can hear me a little better, is have the robot follow a flashlight. We don't want it to respond to the ambient light in the room. So what you want to do now is Tune these potentiometers by turning them up slowly, slowly, slowly until the motors just turn on and then turn them back down just to the point where the motor turns off. So what you're doing is you're setting that threshold below the ambient light level in the room so the robot won't be triggered just by the ceiling lights or lights from a window but it will respond to brighter light from a flashlight. So I'm going to do the same thing that other potentiometer, I'm going to turn it up slowly until the motor starts spinning and then turn it back down until the motor stops and try to get just below that threshold. So now you can see when I put my robot down it's not going anywhere responding to the ambient light but if I take my flashlight which is much brighter and shine it on either one of those photoresistors that makes the corresponding motor on the opposite side of the robot spin. So watch closely. I'm going to shine a flashlight only on this light sensor. That makes this motor spin. So when the robot's on the ground, this motor spinning, most of that vibration is going to transfer to this toothbrush and make the, motor, the robot turn left. So if I have the flashlight over here, ideally the robot's going to turn to the left. Now, I do the opposite thing. I'm going to shine the flashlight only on the right photoresistor that makes the left motor spin and the robot should turn right. So the end effect should be that I can get the robot to turn towards light. Now again I have it on a matte piece of poster board here which is not a very good surface for the toothbrushes to work on. You really want to test it on a smooth surface so we'll show that in a little bit. But that is the basic behavior you should get from your robot if everything is connected correctly. Now if I shine the flashlight on both of the photoresistors equally, I should be able to get the robot to go straight. And if I shine it on just one at a time, 
I should be able to get the robot to turn left or right. So if your robot isn't behaving properly, if it's not turning or it's not going straight or it's just not working at all, there are a handful of common troubleshooting tips that we can look at and we will go over those next. Now, you will probably run into a situation where somebody finishes their robot and they try to turn it on and follow the procedure I just described and they say mine's not working or mine's broken. And they're turning the potentiometers and shining the flashlight on it and there are no motors spinning and just nothing's happening. So if that happens, don't panic. It is very rare for one of the electronic components in the robot to actually be broken or faulty. What is much more common especially for students who are new to working with a breadboard, is just to have one jumper wire on the breadboard misplaced somewhere. So for example, here I have a robot where when I shine the light on, just the motors aren't spinning at all. And at first glance, it looks like everything's okay. I'm going to look at this from the top and it looks like all the wires are in the right place. But if you really go one connection at a time and compare it to the wiring diagram, Eventually, eventually, you will see that there's one critical wire misplaced. This red wire from the battery pack is off by one row, and that means that the whole circuit isn't receiving power, so the robot will just never turn on at all. So even when I slide the power switch up, slide the light on, I'm just not getting anything because this red wire from the battery pack is in the wrong place. So if I double check the circuit diagram, move that down by one hole to the correct location, now my motors are spinning and I'm okay. So that's one option that maybe you'll have something where just the entire robot isn't powering on at all. Um, you could also have a short circuit. So if you feel part of the robot getting hot or see or smell smoke, then you want to immediately disconnect the battery pack because that means you have a short circuit somewhere. And again, you'll want to go back and double check your wiring diagram and just really look because it only takes one misplaced wire to prevent the whole robot from working. So really go through connection by connection and even if the student says they've already d double checked the wiring or somebody else has already double checked, you want to triple check because 99% of the time there's just one of these jumper wires is in a wrong hole somewhere and that'll prevent the robot from working. So I'm not going to go through every single possible iteration since there are really infinitely many ways to configure this and any one part could be off, but you get the example I gave there with the battery pack is just one way that the whole robot could be prevented from working. Another common thing you could see is that half of the robot won't work. So let's see, say I'm going to take one of the photoresistor leads and put it in the wrong hole. And now when I turn this on, you can see that the photoresistor on the left here works. So the motor on the right spins, but the photoresistor over on the right doesn't do anything, and this left motor never spins. And again, that is just because I have one wire in the wrong place, so if you look closely at this photoresistor and the wiring diagram, you'll see that this one lead is in the wrong hole, so if I move that back over, <clears throat> then both my photoresistors and both my motors are working again. If you really are worried that a component is actually broken, so say you have a student who claims, I've tested everything and my left motor just never spins and I think my potentiometer is broken. But my right motor is working and I think my other potentiometer is okay. You can test that pretty easily. So let's say, again, say, in theory, I'm claiming that this potentiometer is broken and this one is working. Well, then you can say, okay, what happens if we switch them? So I'm going to switch these around. And you see that some funny things can happen if you start yanking components out of the circuit. For example, there the motors got stuck on. So say I'm going to switch these around. And now I have my supposedly broken one over here and my supposedly working one over here. You can then see if the behavior of your motors changed. If this motor used to not spin and then this one stopped spinning when I moved the broken potentiometer over here, then there is a chance that maybe you do actually have a broken component. But if the motors stay the same, if this one wasn't working before, then and it's still not working, even after you switch the potentiometers, then it's probably something else in your circuit, like a uh, missed wire or another part that's placed improperly. And there are various other things that can go wrong. Again, I can't really go through every single possible scenario since there are so many different ways to connect the circuit, but you'll saw 
One example there, strange things can happen, like if the potentiometer isn't connected correctly, you can actually have a motor that gets stuck on. So if the, you put the robot down and it's always going in circles or it's always going forward, that could mean that you have one or both motors that are somehow pr improperly connected and that's causing them to be on all the time as opposed to off all the time. So, again, there, there are just a handful of strange behaviors you might see ranging from the motors not spinning at all to the motors being stuck in the on position or one half of the circuit working and the other half not or worst case scenario a short circuit where something gets hot or you see smoke or see part of the breadboard look like the plastic starting to melt so you just want to keep an eye out for those things and if you do see them again especially with short circuits you want to remove the battery pack leads real quick before you cause any further damage to the circuit but just take the breadboard side by side with the wiring diagram and one at a time just go through each component and double check and make sure that all of the leads are in the right places and once you've walked through everything then you should be able to figure out what the problem was most of the time you'll just find one component that was misplaced somewhere so now that we have the robot working I'm going to give a little better demonstration where I have turned off a lot of the ambient lights and I have the robot on a much smoother wood surface here and you can see that now the robot is much faster and I can get it to turn to follow the flashlight. So I can get it to even go in really tight circles if I just shine the flashlight on one side and then I can kind of get it to go a little straighter. One thing you might notice is that remember that these are vibrating robots powered by vibrating motors and they do have toothbrushes for feet so it is pretty difficult to get them to go perfectly straight. You might have a robot that kind of likes to arc off to one side a little bit more even if you're really trying to use the flashlight to drag it over to the other side so you can see this particular robot really likes to turn right it doesn't quite like to turn left as much so you can see I can get it to make very sharp right turns but I can't get it to make very sharp left turns this is where adjusting the potentiometers and the physical layout of the toothbrushes really comes in so if you remember back at the beginning of the video I said you really want to get everything nice and symmetric on the bottom of the breadboard here if you look and see that one of your toothbrushes is tilted a little bit, either tilted at an angle like that, or if you look at it like this, tilted inward, that can really cause the robot to hook to one side. So you might want to kind of adjust those if the glue is a little flexible or peel them off carefully and glue them back on to really make sure those toothbrushes are as parallel and symmetric as possible. And that will help you get a robot that can turn equally in either direction. You also want to check your potentiometers and make sure you have them set to about the same angle. So for example, if I have one of these turned up, you can tell by the little notch in the handle that this one is turned farther than that one. That could cause one of your photoresistors to be more sensitive than the other. And then when you shine the light on both of them, the robot might want to turn more to one side instead of going straight. So. Once you get the robot working, it should definitely respond to light, meaning you should get it to a point where if you sit it down and you have the threshold tuned properly, it's not going to move at all. And then when you shine a brighter, brighter flashlight on it, it will move forward, but it might take a little more tuning to get it to turn left and right. So here you can see after a little more tinkering, I can get this robot. Now it will turn both right and left. Again, it turn, now it still turns right a little better than it turns left, but it's doing better than it was before, where I can actually get it to turn consistently in both directions. And I was able to do that, again, just by taking these toothbrushes and kind of adjusting their tilt a little bit to cause it to favor um, turning one side a little more than another. So that'll take a little bit of trial and error on your part, but in the long run, after some fidgeting, you should be able to get it so your robot will go mostly straight if you put the flashlight in front of it and off to either side if you aim the flashlight just at one of the photoresistors at a time. So once your students have all their robots working you can have them try to race, you can set up maybe an obstacle course with some different items like books or office supplies on a table and have them use a flashlight to navigate between them or you could just let them have fun. 
And then when you're done, we'll go over cleanup steps for packaging the robots for future use. Now, when you're done, you will probably want to disassemble the robots so the next group of students can build them again from scratch. But when you do that, you're going to want to remove all the circuit components from the top of the breadboard, but do not remove the toothbrush heads or the battery pack. You're going to want to leave the body of the robot intact because this sticky adhesive on the bottom of the breadboard will lose its stickiness as if you try to reuse it and pull things off and put them back on. And you can actually wind up peeling out the inside of the breadboard. So watch what happens here if I start peeling this toothbrush off. You can see I'm actually yanking out the metal clips on the inside of the breadboard there and you don't want to do that. So instead you can just pull out all the components that are on the top of the breadboard and these are actually a little easier to remove than they are to put in because you just pull them straight out. So again you're going to want to, you can remove the battery pack leads but leave the battery pack itself connected. You can also leave the motors attached and just disconnect their leads since you have either taped or glued them to the sides. You don't want to remove them either again because just the tape or glue will be annoying to redo each time. So once you remove everything, your next students will have a clean breadboard to start and assemble the circuit themselves. One safety note, you're also going to want to remove the batteries for storage. So if you leave the batteries in and the red and black leads contact each other while it's sitting in storage, that will create a short circuit. And worst case scenario, actually get hot and maybe if these are in a plastic container, they could melt something. Um, or at a minimum, it's just going to drain the batteries and then your batteries will be dead the next time you start. So. You either want to remove the batteries and store them separately or take some tape and tape over these metal parts of the leads so those can't create a short circuit if they touch each other. And then you can just store all of the little parts. The little plastic baggies that come with your kit are great for doing that and store everything for the next use. This video was created by Science Buddies with generous support from the Best Buy Foundation. There's also a PDF that accompanies this video with complete instructions for using the robot and troubleshooting information.